But here's here's the idea for tonight. Um, that we're just Marina, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. you. Sorry. Me? Okay, no, I just want to make sure. <laughs> so um, there's this there's this article that came out in July um, that is a framework for multimodal assessment. And Christina Cantrill, um, who can't be here tonight, but has been working with her class um, that is about multimodal writing um, with teachers um, and using using the framework. And we know a couple of the authors. Chris, you should look. A couple of them come from Utah as well. Um, and. Kristen Turner is going to join us May 4th, right? And maybe by then we'll have other people join us. But what, what I would love to do tonight is um, look, at the, um, look at the framework together um, on Now Comment, and then look at this room a little bit and think about the multimodal examples the two of you have brought, okay? In terms, in terms of of the um, audience mode and meaning and originality, right? <clears throat> um, and let me remind you: you can make the rooms, you can see more what's in the room with this little minus sign or the minus sign on your keyboard. Um, let me ask any questions yet about what I've been thinking. Nice to see you, by the way. It's been a while. <laughs> But yeah, um, um, I think um, I mean I'm familiar with multimodal assessment. I helped out doing some this summer, but I feel like I should probably do a little bit of reading. Yeah, because I, I haven't read it yet. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and and it's set up on a table down toward the bottom. Um, I just want you to kind of see. Um, they have I think they call them domains. Three domains. There's uh, as I mentioned, audience, mode and learning, mode, mode and meaning, and then originality. The idea of this room that Christina and I have just, uh, so I just want to say that we're asking you to help us think about how to make this room work too, whether it does or not, we don't know. So that you'll see there's a blue group up there for audience, um, and there are some questions for that. There's a green group for mode and meaning, and down toward the bottom, there's an orangey yellow group for originality. And then there are overlaps of all three of those. So there are actually six places. So we were imagining, <laughs> right, that we could, we could bring 24 people here. They would sit all around the way we are right now with an introduction. Maybe they've already read the article, right, um, and, and annotated it. Um, and then we bring them a an example, like you're going to do a little bit later. And we could go off into small groups and just focus on audience, for example, mm -hmm. and answer the audience questions. And then come together to to kind of assess that piece of work. So, making sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Chris, I agree with you. Let's give ourselves some time to read. Is that okay? Yes. And the way you do that is go down to the bottom. Come on down. And over there's a table over here. And if and if you and the signs I think the sign says use now comment. So if you click on that and log into now comment, you'll find the article. And um, shall we give each other ten minutes to read? That's not enough time to go through the whole thing. But a, is that enough time, you think, to get a sense? Uh -huh. Yeah. And start making some comments. And, you know, we can always come back to it. Did it open properly for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I won't interrupt you. We'll just read. If you have questions or thoughts, go ahead and yell out. But Okay. I mean, it is, yeah, sorry. I won't say more.
<clears throat> I want to remind you that <clears throat> if you want to see what other people are writing, you would refresh your browser and now come. Okay, I just want to check in. It's okay if we want to keep reading or Marina or Chris, I don't do you guys aren't showing up on now comment. Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Or, you're just no, reading. I actually read first all the way through before I annotate. Oh, that's that's cool. I'm kind of a slow reader. Yeah, no. That's fine. You're probably not. It's just a normal reader. So, more time for reading? Just a bit. Uh, for okay. personally, I don't know about Marina and Nikki. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, I'd, like a, I'd like a little more time. Okay. Cool, cool.
Well, being as it's seven thirty or nine thirty, whatever time zone you're half half the we, hour. Yeah, we could stop whenever you like. like. It. Yeah, it takes me a while to no. process. Um, of course, yeah. Let me just finish the sentence. Hold on. <laughs> so, um, All right. Um, I finished my sentence. Do, wait, do uh, should we come back together and talk a little bit? Or so this takes longer than this takes some time to get our heads around. Yes, even though it's somewhat familiar, even to us, but. But talk, what are you thinking as you're reading? I know you're not finished. We're not, but yeah. The first thing that comes to mind, since I've been spending a lot of time sort of thinking about open education resources, mm -hmm. um, is the notion of the democratization of, um, of knowledge and, you know, open pedagogy. So this seems to sort of leverage this notion of open pedagogy. When I think about teaching kids, um, I, I, I thought it was kind of fascinating when you talk about remixing and um, making sure that you've got the breadcrumbs that indicate where you got what you got. And so there seems to be kind of a tension between it's okay to remix, that, that can be creative, right? Um, but how do you how do you attribute ideas to other people? So um, I found that kind of a fascinating <clears throat> issue. O OER is different when you talk about it at the college level, um, or teachers writing OER. When you start talking about kids, um, you know, trying to do this kind of work, that that issue of academic integrity comes in, right? Right, and. and yeah. And all of that is in the originality box, right? Yeah, think, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Chris, you were going to say something. Um, well, I couldn't help but kind of reflect on my own teaching and, you know, the products that I shared as I was reading through here. Um, but Nikki's point about remixing is kind of interesting because, um, again, I was reflecting back to the stuff that I shared. And in both of those cases, a student writer took on... Um, tried to summarize a lot of different projects, a lot of different video productions into a narrative whole in text. And um, uh, so the idea of remixing is like the writers, so to start with, let's say each one of those articles was actually, uh, like a video of like a video diary um, for the school's back thing. And so there, then there's a transcript that's generated. And though, so then the writer was tasked with trying to thread 
those together, um, each, you know, all the different video diaries together. Right. And so like when you said remixing, it struck me that actually both of those and the 9-11 thing, a student took, there were eight different teachers interviewed and one student took it on to remix all of those into a kind of a narrative whole in the video. Right. So, I mean, that's my, when you said remixing, it kind of made me think of that stuff. Right. Right. No, that's really helpful. And, and I hope we get a chance to look more carefully at that work. Um, I, I want to kind of keep it meta a little bit. It, it does, in that it does seem like we could use the domain of originality to analyze your, the, the examples you brought. Is that, mm -hmm. is that a fair summary? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Marina? The example you want to bring, is there, is there originality? Is there stuff that they're using from other places or? They, yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't really comment too much on the article because, like Chris said, I kind of had, to, you know, I had to get through it a little bit. But I did stop when I saw um, a part that um, came from Troy Hicks' work, and it was mm -hmm. just kind of coincidental because I've been doing a lot of work in my office, and I found the book um, that he wrote, "Teaching Dig Digital Literacy." So, um, and he wrote about, you know the access to tools or the way I interpret it, the access mm -hmm. to tools is really important to the originality. So, um, you know, kids, I, all students and learners need to know what's available to them and um, have to have, I think, multiple experiences um, working with the different tools that they, you know, are allowed to use or for whatever reasons. Um, you know, if there's parameters around them be, because of their age or state laws with privacy, um, and then they can make assessments about what, um, would be beneficial for them in terms of sharing their message and what they need and what can, um, kind of blend together. Um, I kind of was also thinking about it in respects to like the low stakes, high stakes types of writing that those multiple experiences with different forms and platforms for publishing and creation, um, an application of knowledge can um, help them build their competencies, especially because this article like talks a lot about assessment. And in order to have those be pieces in assessment, they have to have a lot of experience and guided practice and instruction. And I also think um, to go back to the remixing work that um, that authentic um, teaching needs to happen around, um, you know, uh, ownership and respecting the rights of original creators and creative commons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I, you did make a comment too, Paul, about like not, not living in like English. I, I, I think it can, that just goes to show that like it, it kind of lives in every, in every classroom, in every academic area. The, the math work that you're going to share with us, <laughs> um, yeah. though they, they reflected using Scratch or something else. No, they used Minecraft or they did like hands-on Lego. Oh, pieces. Minecraft. I thought, I thought, okay. Yeah, they could have used Scratch. So I just, I, I just want to be a little bit um, pushbacking about this. There is this notion that, you know, there are all these tools out there, just choose one. Um, but I think it's actually the opposite of that, that kids don't get enough time to really understand Minecraft, for example, to really understand the intricacies of the different tools they're using. Um, and then we get sort of just surface, not so interesting products uh, often. I worry about that at least um, in, in the interpretation that I'm hearing a little bit from you, Marina. Do you hear what I'm saying there? Um, I hear what you're saying. I'm just thinking about the way that an educator might lay that experience out for students might be to expose them throughout the year to what they um, have available to them so that they are getting experience with each platform or tool. And then as the year goes on, they can make decisions for themselves. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want them to get really good at one, <laughs> right? Or two. Um, I don't necessarily think they need to be exposed to a bunch of them. That's just sort of worth thinking about. But um, 
Oh, well, I got a question. Yeah. For you. I, yeah. You commented to my comment when I said, um, are authors in under these conditions inventing their own audience, right? Um, Which is the other domain said, here. No, no, it's, it's a matter of determining what you want your audience to do with, with what you, with your product. Explain what you mean. What do you expect them to do with it? So okay. the, the quickest example comes from the article when, when you get down to it. Um, the one where there, there's a, a website that students have set up for other students and there are things for them to click on. Like, how do you want your audience to navigate your, your product, right? What okay. do you want them to do there? I think it, I think it's a different question than just who are they, right? Um, Very much so, yeah. Yeah. But it's, but it, yeah. But you still imagine okay, well, a real audience. The yeah. They, they had an example of a children's book, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I assume there was, you know, there there was more than sort of just the pictures and the words, but it, all I saw was the pictures and the words. Um, but again, when you say, what do I want someone to, what do I want my audience to do with that book? Um, am, I si am I saying I want an audience that um, finds themselves in the book and therefore identifies? Um, so I want to make sure the characters resonate with with the with the kids that I'm writing this book for. Am I is that is that something in terms of doing? Yeah, uh, I understand if it's doing like I, I I've got a navigation that I want people. But that that to me is different than, I mean that's one aspect of multimodal um, writing, yeah, but. Right. But I think it's both, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's okay. like, do I want people to take action? And then, you know, that's physically maybe something like clicking here or do, yeah. or in society, you know, like, do I want to move people yeah. to yeah. social change? Marina, can I ask you um, the math example you're going to show us? Did, yeah. they, did they have an audience in mind or not? Um, well, the math task, they basically, it, it, we were just starting a unit on fractions, so it was more like um, an inquiry task um, before they had formal instruction on fractions. So their audience would be one another and actually themselves because they would be returning back to this work at the end of the unit on fractions to clarify and confirm and revise their thinking their original thinking but they were looking at each other's products yeah mm -hmm. they will they will be it's still in progress it's just in process in progress they're doing like their video editing right now all right so marina what would i expect that the kids in in your class what you'd want them to be doing is learning some of these um, math concepts from each other by, by, mm. I mean, at, clearly one thing you want me to do is by doing this kind of activity, you want me to develop some understanding of fractions, but what do you want my audience to do outside of me? Learn from me? Well, the, what, actually with the videos, it leads to whole class discussion around yeah. um, reasonability, uh, uh, reasonableness of what students might be uncovering. I mean, they're really coming off of a unit of area. So um, the task was to, they have like a handball. It's like a playground task. They have a handball court and they know the dimensions of the wall and they know that a can of paint will only, will paint about a hundred square feet. Um, right. So the question is really about how many paint cans do you need? So ultimately, mm -hmm. You know, after they construct a wall in um, in Minecraft, Minecraft. Um, with the dimensions, they can um, begin to assess like, well, how much paint would they need? Um, okay. And then we have conversations around it, and then we actually, and then we go through a, our whole unit, and then we are going to come back to it. It's the first time um, we're doing it this way. That's pretty cool. How old are the kids? 
uh, like eight and nine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They, so they, they really like, they love, they have Minecraft EDU and, um, they really want more tasks in Minecraft. And I was hmm. just talking to someone earlier. Like, I don't, I don't know mine. I mean, I do, but I don't really know it like they do, but I, I know how to set up a task that they could do. Um, and their engagement is super high. So, wow. So, and not all of them like Minecraft. So I don't uh, think that, you know, it's, I don't think that they should all have to do it that way if they don't prefer it. That's where the Legos come in. Yeah. And then they also, there's also, a, they also use a different um, website with virtual manipulatives if um, somebody preferred to use that. And all of these, they've had experience with Wii Video and Minecraft, as well as a uh, Mathicon, I think it's called. Point well taken. The, um, the, can, can you try to show some of this? So um, here's, yeah. I, as, as you're thinking about that, I, I just want to say that obviously this process takes longer than I imagined, and we need to keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, but this room stays set up and we could like maybe leave things here and think about it. But um, I, I do want to try to look at some of the work. Um, shall we just do that in the next 15 minutes yeah. and see how that works? Um, and we'll, we'll try to think about the, the three domains um, with that work in mind. And, and if we can get back to looking at the questions. The questions are on the signs, by the way, up by the, each group. But um, I don't know. I don't think we'll get there. We'll just kind of share things. Maybe um, maybe we'll start with Marina. Marina, do you know how to share on here? And yeah. and Nikki and Chris, are you aware of the new share in mm. Kuma Space? No. So okay. Um, Marina, is it online? What you have? Yeah. Okay. Is it? So what what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to present and then you want to you're going to want to choose a tab on Chrome. I think I'm sharing now, right? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Now, what we can do by the way now is that there's on the top black bar there's four little arrows that say enter full screen. If each of us clicks that, you'll find that we're now in a different space where we can see the, her screen bigger and we can see each other better. Did that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. What's nice, by the way, is that everybody can share their screen now and it's, it stays attached to your, your icon. Um, and it also like if if you go to a different place and you're not within the the um, bubble, um, people can't see your screen. But if you're in the bubble, they can see your screen. So it's an interesting. But anyway, go ahead. Just just talk us through what you have here, maybe, and we'll. Yeah. So like I said, it's the that's based off of the three act task. So the kids are really presented with um, something to get them um, thinking mathematically. Um, it does involve fractions. It's coming off of their area of, uh, their unit, uh, their last unit on area. And, um, this is one of my students kind of explaining a little bit about what she created. And, um, you, you'll hear her like mathematical misunderstanding as, as you hear the video. And the idea again is that we would have conversations around this and then revisit it at the end of the unit. And this is Minecraft, right? Um, she used Minecraft to construct the tasks and she used Wii Video to um, do put her video together. Okay. That's it. That's in the, in the media do... stuff. Good. I'm so sorry. No, yeah, it's okay. Keep one. Keep one. I'll shut up. <laughs> the thing that I'm going to do for this is how many paint buckets do we need to paint this whole wall? I think we need one and a half paint buckets because the whole wall is 10 times 7 and 10 times 7 is 70. And how much there is in a paint bucket is 100 feet. So this wall is 70 feet, but we can use one and a half. That's my reason why. Um, 
So that was one student's example of how they created in Minecraft. And you can hear that like after a couple, she already has said to me that she's like, oh my gosh, I meant like a little bit less than that. <laughs> um, so the nice thing about having it is to be able to go back to it and like reflect. And, and I think that's really important um, for kids to go back and revise their thinking as well. Um, and I'll just show you one other. They're really short. This is a different kid who can, who did other aspects in Minecraft. And then I labeled Kenzie Call to find out the time. Then I noticed to myself, hey, just do 10 times 7. So, and that gave me 70. So the total area of the handball court is 70 square feet. And we must find, and we were supposed to find out how much paint cans you need. It's worth a hundred to use one book can. So I did fractions and said, you need three fraction, three, three um, quarters out of four quarters of one paint can. And that is my Minecraft math. Um, so as you can see, like using different tools, using the, the poster boards to actually write out some of the thinking and just kind of different way of um, composing. Um, but so is, is the square in the background, is that like 70? Are there 70 squares there? Or? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see that. No, no, I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. I like the little horse that was grazing in the background. <laughs> yeah, so they're they're engaged in this other project too. They're making inclusive playgrounds. Um, so it just kind of the task kind of came up, and he actually added his in, and I think him and his group are adding in. Um, they want to have a spot for like therapy dogs and service dogs too in the playground. So I think they like had like a lot of other animals to re represent the idea. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's it's fascinating just to hear them, uh, you know, like the way he was trying to talk about fractions, you mm -hmm. know, three fraction, you know, yeah, that's pretty cool. They can come back and then reflect on. Yeah. And as Paul knows, like my big habit of mine that I'm working on is thinking with precision and clarity. So I always like think about like them coming back and, and being more precise and, you know, things like that. So revising almost like their script and so can i just clarify then at the um you said this is within an overall project of the playground the this actually this was a this was a math task it's just we're we're, do, we're doing another we're always doing some a million yeah. things Paul. the other thing that we're doing is we actually did a whole unit on like um accessibility and we kind of did an inquiry into playgrounds and um how to make them accessible so that and inclusive for all people so this, but are these handball courts going to be in their playground or not? Or it's they, they they're just their, connected? But yeah, he put his in there. Um, mm -hmm. That's where he ended up putting it instead of his own a different world. So it's fine. It, it, I, there can be a handball court there too. Sure. So why don't we, Chris? Why don't you present a little bit? Does that sound right? I think so. And then I mean, then we can. I didn't know if anyone had questions for Marina more. We do, but I, I think I want to come back to it. Marina, okay. Marina unless Marina did, is there something that's the other, the other media you were using, the Legos? Yeah. Is there an yeah. example of that one? Or not? Um, I have one uploaded. Hold on. Let me scare again. Um, so she used a document camera and then obviously like Legos and Okay, so this is my wall that I made and it is um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven rows of ten. What I did for 
this was the um that I did. I looked at the wall. I counted the first, the top, and the side. Then I did seven times ten, and I counted by seven ten times and got seventy. So the area of this law is seven. Okay. And what was her task, though? So she I love only, the setup, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so she didn't, like, complete the second part of it. She really just figured out the area, but she mm -hmm. didn't answer uh, the question part. So um, what's really nice is that, like, as I'm looking at this, too, I can see that, like, she's got, like, that, like, conceptual understanding of um, the multiplication, and she has skip counting strategies, and she's using rows and groups of, mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's other there. So I can look at this and I can see a lot of her mathematical understanding. And then her next step, obviously, is to start to think about that paint paint cam part and how much how many cans she'll need of paint to cover the wall. Say the problem again, because <laughs> I want to figure it out. No, but so how many? So how many? It's OK. <laughs> so the, the problem is each paint can covers how much area? A hundred square feet. Oh, okay. The big idea is really for them to realize that, you know, oh, you're not going to use the whole can. You're using a part of the can. You're using a fraction of the can. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Marina, was there a real advantage for the kid using, um, the you know, using the Legos to videotape it? Um, I understand why... You know when you when you're using a, a software program obviously you you know you're recording it but i'm wondering I, I is that just because you wanted to keep the playing field even well with in terms of recording or with the tools yeah that everybody had to have a recorded product of some kind um, I thought it was important for them to have a recorded product so that they did have that um, piece to go back and look at after time was okay. over and to, okay. to, you know, revise their thinking or, you know, say like, at first I thought this, but now I realize or now I understand. Okay. Um, so more for the reflective piece towards the end. Got it. Okay. So it's, so it's using multi multimodal production. The, the audience is your future self. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Um, Chris, we'll get back to your stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Probably. Uh huh. Uh, let's assume that um we're going to be so um one of the authors of the text is going to be with us on May fourth, which gives us a couple weeks to kind of get there, right? So let's just, let's assume there are going to be more people with us next week, right? and this can build a little bit toward that May fourth time. Um, what do we need to think about so we can make this work? Um, and I'm yeah. Well, I'm um, going to spend a little bit more time thinking about the the assessment piece that article. Mm -hmm. um, next week is we're actually today was our first day of spring break. And I'm actually going to be on the road next Wednesday, but I'll be here the Wednesday after. And and that's the the author time, right? Uh, May May fourth is the author time. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool, Chris. I, we can we can always figure that that out. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. And we can also but, just look at your stuff. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. I can um, quickly just share one thing. Okay. If you don't, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty short. This thing here. Okay, so share my screen. And then so, you you want to share a tab is the best thing to do. And then I share a tab. Let's see. And then it takes you to that tab when you do that. Is you're not seeing that though? Not yet. Uh, oh, you know what? Got a little. Wonder if I have to allow it to do it or something are, are you on chrome i am on chrome oh there we go share that tab okay so got it 
And so then maybe now you can see? Nope. <laughs> Let me see. Present. Start. Yeah, start. Start. Chrome, with Chrome tab. And then you choose the tab and then you hit share. Got it. Chrome tab. Okay. I think that's what I was not doing. Okay, there we go. I think we were in business. Yep, perfect. Yeah, good, good. So, um, the, and remember that the rest of us hit hit the uh, enter full screen. Okay. Um, Got it. Yeah. So maybe to start with, um, so this is someone has a different writer has taken excerpts from the different uh, video diaries that people did in January about um, coming back to school with Omicron. So down at the bottom is one girl's um, video diary. And you can, this is Corrine's video diary. And you can see, see that she's been, like the writer has excerpted some of her stuff to fit into the narrative, I think a couple times. Um, this is on the student media website. And I think it's interesting about the video is Corrine just decided to do this little graphic. Um, and she used Google Slides to make it. So that's an example I would say of like somebody who used a tool that made sense to them for something that she really didn't have to do. So the idea was to just do, you know, tell, do a video diary, perhaps cover it with some B-roll. So I think I have, this is maybe two minutes. But with the originality in, in mind, I, I want to ask her Time. Like, where she got the idea. But go ahead. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, she's going to, Sorry she to also, interrupt. Okay. Other kids did B-roll of just like kids walking around and, you know, pictures of them at school. You can see she does some stuff where she's um, starting with some, um, you know, like, online go, articles. Go ahead. In I time won't again, we hear about the impact COVID-19 has had on learning in school. In the spring of 2020, most schools throughout the nation went online in an effort to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The pace of change, lack of stability and support, and anxiety about the uncertain future led to increased mental health problems and decreased learning efficiency and rate. The negative effect of remote learning, combined with vaccines and other health precautions, led the majority of schools to return to in-person schooling, but not without added protection. These safety measures are said to have led the social aspects of school to be different and sometimes downright strange. But personally, everything feels pretty normal to me. I mean, masks are required and we have to test if we have symptoms or are exposed. But other than that, COVID has had a minimal impact on my school life. Now, maybe this is just a misconstrued reality. I could just be so used to this that I don't quite remember anything else. <laughs> it could also be that I just started high school, and to me, high school has always been like this. But I think, if anything, COVID might have brought positive changes to our school system for the future. Parents, students have experienced the challenges teachers face and now have a greater respect for our educators. Most importantly, I think coronavirus has taught us that some of the most important lessons taught at school are the social ones. Yeah. So that's cool. her thing there. Yeah. All right. Chris, Chris, does she credit, does she credit the other authors as she cites them? No, this is her, um, that's just her video diary up above the writer has credited her. You can see yeah. like, okay. Yeah. You know, that writer has pulled some a quote from that video. Right. And okay. Just that curious. Piece there. So, yeah. So that's an example that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Because it's collaborative work as well. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, again, I'm impressed with how much time this takes. Um, and so we need to be patient and give it that time, um, I think. So, just, just say. Both, both understanding the theory and 
and looking at the work and having conversations about it. But um, thank you for starting this off. <laughs> the the nice thing again about Kuma Space is that we can come back here and, and mess around with it with with other products and so forth. Um, so oh, I just need to say thank you to the three of you. Um, any you have any kind of thoughts as we suspend for now? <laughs> Well, could we focus yeah. on mode um, when, in our in our subsequent discussion? That was honestly the concept that you know the difference between mode and media was a little bit. Um, it's a fascinating idea, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. Don't want to wait, waste yeah, the like wait. To do that too, because I, that was kind of where I like found myself lingering a little bit more again, because I had a little experience with like um, Troy Hicks's book, and then I found myself rereading that part. So mm -hmm. I would like to spend time in that experience. The, given the video we just saw there, was there mode and media there? The media is video, right? And the mode is reflective is that i mean is that that's the beginning of the difference right like media is it's is just the tool you're using to get the idea out and mode right. is like how you're thinking about it i think right i think so but in yeah. in in the case that chris demonstrate to me it's kind of like the mode is i'm going to write an argumentative essay and i'm going to use um different tools to be able to convince um, my reader about what I'm trying to say. So um, hmm. the, se the sense that the evidence is embedded there and I can look at the evidence. I don't just have to trust what the author says this young lady was, was saying. I can go and look at the evidence myself. Mm -hmm. I can watch the video, right? Right. That makes me, that makes me a co, uh, kind of a co-author, right? <laughs> In a sense, because I can draw my own conclusions. Right. You're just making me think, though, that we could we could probably spend half an hour, forty five minutes in e each of those domains, and just just to get oh, them yeah. clear for ourselves, and then looking at some examples. And then, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Yeah. Chris, we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Enjoy your time off or wherever you're going. Yeah, Southern Utah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And check the authors out. See if you can um, look them up, honestly. Um, in the meantime, that would be a great thing. That do, do, do you see the, they, two or three of them come from Utah. Um, okay, but, I will. Yeah. They sound familiar, I'm sure. I've, yeah. You might have bumped into them. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Marina, we'll talk about the other work, but yeah. Yeah, are we going to be, Paul, are we going to be using this framework? I was, I was, easier? I was thinking that, yeah, but now that it feels this complicated, I'm not sure, but maybe. I mean, it's so, it's so relevant too. It's, I, I definitely, I'm going to. Okay. I did more into this too. Cool. For myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really wondering as, as I look at our student population that seems to be, you know, sort of going to populate our third cohort as the two of you plan. I would, I wonder if you should move away from STEM, you know, as a, as this, as sort of the focal point and really look at multimodal literacy and not necessarily feel hamstrung by, by any subject area. I think this notion of multimodal writing might be very fertile ground. It is, which is STEM, right? It's just STEM from a different direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's the T in yeah. STEM, right? Yeah. That's right. fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Cool. All righty. Talk to you all soon. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone.